decided to join a D&D campaign with a group of friends. All of them are older than me, by a significant margin. Youngest other members are 27. I'm 22. Be told that the campaign is going to be relaxed. I know these people from my work and they're all fun to hang out with. Two of them have played D&D, but this was back around 20-ish years ago. DM has never DM'd before, and the other two have never played once. I have basically done nothing but play D&D with my friends since middle school. This might be bad. They say that they're going to be playing Pathfinder. I've never touched the system, but sure, let's do it. Make a meme character for their reactions. Because I know this is basically going to just be us sitting around, getting high while rolling dice occasionally. Session begins, and exactly that happens. Basically just dick jokes and drunken debauchery. One character is a lawful good half-orc fighter, played by a 27 year old. Two characters are half-elf spellcasters, one of which is the completely new player, and the other has a fascination with phallus shaped objects. His staff is a dick. His robe is covered in dick shapes. He collects the dicks of his fallen enemies and puts <laughs> and puts them in special dick pockets. <laughs> oh my god. I would just like to point out that this gentleman is in his mid forties, is a close family friend, and has known me since I was about eight. Please note that this is not Dick Kickham. He comes later. Last character is an elf rogue that basically screams Edge, played by Dick Kickham's wife. And my character is half orc cleric named Ongrash because someone had to heal. Session literally starts in a dungeon. No fanfare or explanation. Our characters wake up in a dungeon. Party starts off paranoid and tries all sorts of checks in the door because the DM has stated that he hopes to kill us all tonight as a start to a campaign. After 15 minutes of the DM describing the door, door shaped objects and how locks work, Ongrash slams the door open and charges through, revealing a hallway and another door. Long story short, Ongrash, who has seven intelligence, says fuck precautions and charges out. Our party finds four weird war spiders and Ongrash reveals his true form. Magical girl Ongrash Chan, oh god. Picture Sailor Moon, if she was an overweight half-orc in her mid-forties <laughs> with a pop belly and a, ba- <laughs> and a bald spot. <laughs> I expected laughs and eye rolls. Turns out no one at the table has even heard of anime before and the magical girl joke flies so far over their heads it enters low earth orbit. The first session is a bit of a slog, as we find some puzzles and fight a few combats. Dick Wizard manages to use one of his captured phalluses to distract some werewolves mid fight, and we find a lot of gems that turn out to be soap. No explanation was ever given on that front, by the way. Session ends after about 6 hours, and no one has died, mostly because the DM is still getting used to Pathfinder's action system and he set the monsters too easy. We ended the night by finding a ladder and climbing to the surface, pockets full of diamonds looking soap bars. The next session starts off with, you wake up, Q groans. Party is woken up in the top room of an inn, to knocking on the door. Turns out we never rented the room and the inn staff have no idea how we got in there, but they would like us to leave. Casual racism is shown to the orcs among us. I would like to point out, that this is the moment when I first realised that I was the only person playing a good character. Ongras Chan is big on love and redemption and purity of heart. The other half orc, named Kronk, generic, yeah. is played with the accent of Kronk from Emperor's New Groove. Oh god. Proceeds to get into shouting match with the barkeep. I briefly attempt to follow the plot hook of us waking up in a room together, but no one remembering how we got there, but gets sidetracked. Party decides to split up for a moment. Elves head to find answers, while the orcs hide inside, because it turns out that even the guards are racist to orcs. Krunk walks outside and starts shouting things like, Damn you wizards, and fuck bigotry! Some guards who were nearby come to talk to him. I manage to partially defuse the anger by blaming hangovers and the like, and the guards turn to leave. The second they all turn around, Krunk takes an axe to the closest guard's back, critting and killing him instantly. He proceeds to push him out of the door of the inn and hold the doors closed. After a moment of hesitation, my character decides to sit down at the table and pretend to have no idea who this murder hobo is. Lawful good, by the way. Rest of the party hears shouting and fighting and comes running, even though the part of the town they were in was about a mile away. Party decides to do the smart thing, namely, act like they have no clue who the murdering sociopath is 
and sit outside and wait. Crunk manages to lock the door, then runs to the bar, spills liquor everywhere and lights the whole bar on fire. Please note that I, the bartender and several dozen citizens are all locked in there with him. Please don't. The guards break the door down, see fire, then run around to the back door and block his escape while the civilians and myself run out of the burning building. Crunk runs upstairs and jumps out of the window, shield first, taking zero damage and landing on his feet. For some reason the party decides to follow this madman and we flee into the poorer section of the town, losing pursuit. I quickly reach over and replace the G on his alignment to N. We proceed to break into someone's house and hide there for a few nights. When we wake up, wanted posters for Crunk's face are posted all around town. We find out that poor people have been going missing for the past few months. That the new archbishop who runs the city is kind of a dick and the destruction magic of all kinds has been banned without permits. Rather than following on any of these easy plot points or trying to gather information, the party decides we should immediately find the archbishop and kill him without any build up or planning at all. The DM is visibly lost behind the scenes, staring at a city he made and some combat maps that will probably never see use. I feel you buddy. Ongras Chan is dragged behind this group as they run to the church. Bad news. Church is heavily guarded. Go figure. Good news. Proof the Archbishop is evil, given in the form of a giant pit out back where bodies of poor people are thrown into, drained of blood. I would like to point out that the pit is apparently open to the public, because it is literally just behind the cathedral walls and we just walked up to it. As we watch, two guards come out, guarding two servants as they throw a new body into the pit. A quick ambush later, it took almost two hours of in-game time, because half the party has never played, the other half was memeing, and the DM had no actual encounter set up. We sneak inside, but Dickman takes a few phalluses from the body pit as a trophy. Oh god. God. I would like to point out that at this point my character is not fitting in at all with the party, because wanton slaughter appears to be the name of the game, and I am quietly making a new character in between my turns of combat. We managed to sneak into the cathedral read, pass a ridiculous amount of deception checks and direct everyone away from us, entering the catacombs. After solving a short puzzle, it took another two hours, we find a room full of poor people who were hanging from chains, their blood being drained into a massive pot in the middle of the room. Ongras Chan thinks we should lower the victims and heal them, the rest of the party decides against it, because it would take too much time. I do manage to heal one person and send him to get help but the other 49 blood bags are left to die a slow, painful death. We proceed to break into the cathedral proper, sneak our way into the archbishop's room, up a massive staircase, killing and slaughtering our way in. At this point I've given up the charade of trying to be a good person and just join in on the murder. We climb up a massive staircase to the archbishop's room, break in to find a few evil magic items and a tome of lichdom, but otherwise nothing else. I'd like to point out that three sessions have passed by now, but we're still level one and likely not at lich level. Session ends with a guard running up to us, but us managing to convince him that we were chasing the intruders up here, then stabbing him in the back and throwing him down the stairs. I decided to make a new character and say fuck it to logic and reasoning. Let's go full murder hobo, because these trains clearly have no brakes. Next session begins with Ongras Chan looking at the party, saying fuck you guys, I'm gonna go home now and then yeeting himself head first down 300 marble steps. <laughs> <laughs> Party passes by Ongras smear on their way down. Dick's man does not take my dick, as it's too small. <laughs> Enter new character, Dick Kickham. More literally known as Eric with a K, because these people don't know memes, and I'm free to steal all of them. Eric is a dwarf, a dwarf with scaly green skin and sharp teeth as well as a beard clearly made of cotton that is glued to his face. <laughs> <laughs> Eric is clearly a goblin. Dick's man tries to communicate with him in goblin. Eric only speaks common and dwarvish. Turns out Eric doesn't believe in goblins. He claims he is merely a dwarf with a skin condition. <laughs> <laughs> well, why are your teeth so pointy? Meth. Edge rogue player needs about five minutes to collect herself because she's currently high as a kite. Backstory. I was abandoned as a young dwarf hatchling. I was raised by horses, 
The horses also abandoned me, so I was homeless in a dwarven city for a few years before coming here. Party adopts Eric. I ride on Crunk's shoulders as his pet slash emergency ammunition. Party decides that the best way to draw the Archbishop out of hiding is to set the church on fire. Spoiler, it didn't work. Eric and Party interrogate a wealthy business owner by casting light on his penis and saying that it will burst into flames if he doesn't tell us where the Archbishop is. Please note that we just find this guy in a bar and he was literally doing nothing wrong, nor does he have anything to do with the church. Guy was just trying to get a drink on his way home from work. Managed to track the Archbishop to a small hamlet four hours away from the city's proper. After Edge Rogue manages to find out where he lived by performing a pole dancing session. Once again, I feel the need to point out that this woman is a close family friend who has a son my age and knew me since I was eight. To entice people to answer, we track the Archbishop down to his house. We break into the house, which is described as Stepford Wives levels of perfect, and I find an entrance to a secret lab in the form of a massive staircase no one can see down. Crunk surfboards down the stairs on a shield, like a last boy, yeah. until it turns to the right and he slams into a wall. Rest of the party walks. We do manage to find the Archbishop. He seems rather nice, if a bit confused, as to who we are and why we're here. Eric starts the conversation by saying, We've come to discuss starting a prayer group in schools in an attempt to pray the gay away. <laughs> Archbishop states he has no negative feelings towards homosexuality and people should be free to love who they want. Crunk proceeds to restrain him and the Archbishop doesn't even attempt to struggle and starts spilling his master plan, talking about how he was trying to find a way to save the city from a terrible plague that had ravaged the city a few years ago. Turns out he found a cure, but that cure was Satan's worship and required blood to par. He sold the cure to the rich and began collecting their life forces. Party is discussing the relative merits of needs of the many versus needs of the few, and how worshipping dark gods isn't inherently evil, when the Archbishop just casually mentions that the sacrifices had helped him finish his phylactery. No one else in the party seemed to care, so I kicked the bishop in the dick. Turns out he hasn't embraced lichdom yet, so his dangly bits are still intact. Little fact, as a group of mature and mostly stoned adults, we had decided on house rule, that being, if someone lands a strong enough hit in your dick, if you happen to have one, you skip your next combat step. Dick Kickham is a goblin, dwarf monk with crane style attacks, focusing around kicks. He lands a hefty blow to the balls, then uses flurry of blows to use his nuts as a speed bag. A round of initiative occurs, in which every single person except the archbishop makes an attack. All of them aimed at the dick. Eric crits twice, one of them with his main attack and one with a flurry of blows attack. Combat proceeds, with the big evil guy slash mid boss clutching his nuts and getting repeatedly dick punched, kicked, fireballed and axed over and over again before he finally dies. Dame is staring blank in the face at the notebook in front of him before he sighs and gives us our XP. We set the laboratory on fire on our way out for good measure and a great time was had by all. <laughs>